Dear friends, before we start the discussion on surveillance capitalism, I invite your attention to the following instances of alleged misuse or mishandling of personal data. One, the Cambridge Analytica scandal in early 2018 highlighted the extent to which internet companies surveil our online activity. Cambridge Analytica collected information about millions of Facebook users to be used for political advertising by using a cleverly designed questionnaire. It harvested personal data of the people, their acquaintances and friends and passed the information to the US political groups for a price. The company was forced to quit business facing serious legal action. It is also reported that Cambridge Analytica helped certain political parties in India. Interestingly, two Indians were closely associated with the company. Two, in February this year, a scary facial recognition app, now used by more than 600 law enforcement agencies, was hacked and all the data stored by it was stolen. This app was used by many companies to locate the people under surveillance. Also, during interviews, to find out whether you are lying or telling the truth. Three, recently a deal made by the Kerala government with Sprinkler, a startup in the United States run by a Keralite, became a storm in the teacup. The government, throwing caution to the winds, signed up a contract with the Sprinkler to collect health data of millions of Keralites initially without a non-disclosure clause. Four, a big controversy is brewing up in the case of Arugya Sedu. There is a huge indirect pressure from the central government to download the app. The Arugya Sedu, the critics allege, will become a wide open Sedu, that is a bridge for many agencies or business houses to tap not only information about the health of the people, but also their location. Its privacy is doubtful. The government will share data with unspecified other agencies. It is more worrisome as the current government often disregards human rights of the citizens. Aadhaar, for instance, is said to have become a sort of monetary mechanism in the country. These incidents clearly show the games information technology companies or apps can play in our life addicted with the use of smartphones and the internet. When Sputnik and Apollo 11 fired out our imagination, Everyone began predicting that by the end of the century, people would travel to different colonies in the space. But nothing came true. On the other hand, nobody foresaw internet and its development. Capitalism is something like a demon which changes shape according to the needs of the times. Adam Smith, the Scottish economist who in 1776 tried to formulate the principles of capitalism, he said that the market forces, that is demand and supply, coupled with self-interest would bring prosperity and wealth to the people. Now we know that the gulf between the rich and the poor is widening around the world. Capitalism is basically a morally disinterested ideology 
though it claims to be a handmaiden of democracy, freedom, and autonomy of the people. But basically, it's ideologues who are not very uniform or agreeing on all aspects agree that it focuses on the production and distribution of goods and services. Maximization of profit is the lifeblood of capitalism. Capitalists may claim that they support freedom of the market forces, but they in practice try to monopolize on the goods and services they deliver. After the invention of the printing press, perhaps one of the most profound inventions is the digital technology. Once we have developed the technology to digitalize information and share it, the world has transformed beyond recognition. Great social and economic changes have already taken place in human behavior because of that. And we are clueless about the future during the past two decades. Computer has touched everything in our life. A couple of years ago, when we would list the world's largest corporations, the name of Exxon, British Petroleum, or Aramco, along with automobile giants like General Motors, Ford, or Toyota, would come to our mind. Now it is difficult for such companies to come to the top 10 of world's largest corporations. Instead, we have FANG, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. All IT companies. And what these companies are doing? They claim that they most often offer free services and rely upon the advertisements to survive. But do they? Let's examine. Many scholars and researchers are thinking and writing about the cyber universe, but they are only touching some areas without having a comprehensive picture about the new monster. Their business is collecting information about everything under the sun and sometimes above the sun. Giants like Google and Amazon are said to be keeping 1.2 million terabytes. One terabyte is 1,000 gigabytes. And that figure does not include other big providers and the massive servers kept by industry and academia. And in the process, the internet is responsible for around 1 billion tons of greenhouse gases or about 2% of the world's emission. When we use smartphone, laptop, etc., some greenhouse gases are also emitted. People, business, and devices have all become data factories. Now, there are more than 4 point billion internet users. That is more than 80% increase in just five years. Here are some very interesting facts. One, about 300 million new social media users are there every year. In 2019 alone, there was more than 4,74,000 tweets per minute. YouTube users more than tripled from 2014 to 2016, with the users uploading 400 hours of videos each minute. In 2019, users are watching 4.3 3 million videos every minute. Instagram users upload 100 million photos and videos every day. That is around 70,000 million posts every minute. People spend nearly an hour a day 
on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Since 2013, the number of Facebook shares each minute has increased 22%. This is more than 300%. That is 6,50,000 posts per minute. Facebook users click like button on more than 4 million posts every minute. Facebook like button is pressed 13 trillion times. Over 3.5 billion Google searches are done each minute. That is 2 trillion searches per year. That is more than 40,000 queries every second. Around 100 million messages are sent every minute through SMS, etc. Nearly 1 million SMS messages are sent by the time I finish this talk. 10.23 billion texts were sent each day around the world. That is information passed through, exchanged, deleted, stored, mulled over, or ignored. And new bytes are ready to bite us every minute. For instance, in 2016, we have crossed the zeta byte threshold. That is 10 raised 21. That is 21 zeros after one. This is new oil, appropriated and kept under control to mint millions of dollars is profit. This resource is not tangible like gold, petroleum, or copper, but digital information is more valuable than oil, gold, or minerals. In 19th century, for example, the California gold rush cost the largest mass migration in American history. They were in search of gold. Now a different set of brainy people rushed to Silicon Valley for other reasons. And that is not mining silicon. That is where surveillance capitalists turn up like hyenas. It works by providing free services that we happily use enabling the services providers to monitor the behavior of those users in astonishing details, often without their explicit permission. You might be surprised when you order a book on Amazon or Flipkart. A set of other similar books will be shown, tempting you to buy them. Or when you try to buy hamburger or toothpaste, you get unsolicited advice about similar products. Although some of the data collected by the FANG are applied for serving the improvement, the rest are kept as proprietary information. They are processed and converted into prediction products that anticipate what you will do now, soon, or later. These products are sold to other companies who would use them to develop, design, or market their products. This capitalism is simply exploitation of behavioral predictions of data covertly collected through surveillance of users. It is arrogant appropriation of people's personal data. And mind you, the entire product is running in an effectively lawless territory. But those once wild spaces are no longer ungoverned. Instead, they are owned and operated by private surveillance capital and governed by its own iron laws. Thus, Google decided to digitalize and store every book in the world, ignoring copyright issues, 
Google also sends camera team to photograph every street and every house on the planet without asking anyone's permission. A couple of years ago, Facebook launched its Beacons project to report users' online activities, forcing strong opposition from rights groups and consumer associations, and finally, legal action. Facebook was forced to shut down the services in 2009. The FANG most often work with state surveillance agencies and mostly tread upon personal privacy of the people and mint money selling personal information. The digital technology is separating citizens in all countries into two groups, the watchers and the watched. Surveillance capitalism has slowly evolved through many years of trial and error. In 2001, there was a dot-com bust when due to the excessive speculation in the internet-related companies, the value of the shares of many information technology companies tumbled down. In the United States, making many of them go bankrupt. Google then abandoned its declared antipathy for advertising and decided to profit from their exclusive access to users' data. Google also used its great analytical abilities to generate prediction over people's response to an advertisement. Those predictions became basis for targeted advertising. Facebook and other IT companies learned the tricks of the trade from Google. As number of clicks skyrocketed, the ads became gold mine. The success of this new business became highly visible when Google went public in 2001. Its revenues increased by an astounding 3,590%. Now the surveillance capitalism has spread over a wide range of products, services, economic sectors, giving birth to new set of suppliers, products, customers, market makers and players. Any product or service, it begins with the word smart is simply a supply chain interface for unobstructed collection of personal data. Once we searched Google and now Google searches us. To Fang, we are merely human resources, not human beings. Just like the meadows, the rivers, the oceans, and the forests. The surveillance capitalists have moved from desktop to mobile to the streets, parks, restaurants, etc. to locate people, to modify human behavior, and to gather more information about them, their relations, their friends, their acquaintances. People have slept while this new capitalist amassed unprecedented concentration of knowledge and power. They control data science, machine intelligence, the system of suppliers and customers, and also human behavior. They do not create many jobs, nor employ large number of people. For instance, the American motor company General Motors employs more people than Facebook or Google. Google, 1,14,000. Facebook, 43,000. General Motors, 1,64,000. And Toyota, 
70,870. The rise of surveillance capitalism over the last two decades went largely unchallenged. Digital was first, we were told, and stragglers would be left behind. We take new digital services as free, but now we see that the surveillance capitalists behind those services regard us as a free commodity. We assume that we use social media to connect, but we learned that connection is how social media uses us. These platforms are not bulletin boards, but hypervelocity global blood streams into which anyone may introduce a dangerous virus without a vaccine. Once Facebook chief executive Mark Zuckerberg refused to remove a fake video of US Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and later stuck stubbornly to his decision, announcing that political advertising would not be subject to checking. The rapid development of facial recognition systems reveals the public consequences of this supposedly private choice. New monopolies have demanded the right to take our faces wherever they appear, at the airport, at railway stations, on a city street, or a social media page. The Microsoft facial recognition database of 10 million images is made by plucking from the internet without anyone's knowledge or permission. State security agencies include the facial recognition technologies to find out what we are thinking. The United States Israel and China. Chinese security agencies use this facial recognition equipment in Xinjiang where members of the Uyghur community live in open air prisons under perpetual surveillance by the system. During the last two decades, the leading surveillance capitalists, Google, later followed by the Facebook, Amazon and Microsoft have helped to drive this great robbery while simultaneously ensuring their ascendance to the pinnacle of new capitalist hierarchy. They operated in the shadows to amass huge knowledge. They became monopolies without asking any kind of permission from anybody. An ordinary child would recognize their action as mere theft. Surveillance capitalism begins by unilaterally. Is there a way out? Humanity has overcome such technological challenges before. But the surveillance capitalism is a shape-shifting demon, as I said, and it can use limitless resources at its disposal to resist any encroachment. But we have to do. One, we will have to develop new framework to assure privacy of the people and regulate the use of digital data subject to democratic governance. New legislation would interrupt data supply chains by safeguarding the boundaries of human experience before they become under assault from the forces of datafication. The choice to turn any aspect of one's life into data must belong to the individuals by virtue of their rights in a democratic society. This means, for example, that companies cannot claim the right to your face or use your face as free raw material for analysis or to sell any 
computational products that deserve from your face. We have to make it illegal, the harvesting of personal information. As we outlaw markets that trade in human organs, babies and slaves. Such markets are both morally repugnant and produce predictably violent consequences. We know in the long run surveillance capitalists would challenge human freedom and undermine democracy. European Union has set an example in 2018. The legislation called General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR focuses on ensuring that users know, understand and consent to the data collected around them. Under GDPR, the companies must be clear and concise about their collection and use of personal data. The law protects individuals in the 28 member countries of the European Union. Even if the data is processed elsewhere, the Indian government is also planning to legislate a personal data protection bill which would control the collection, processing, storage, usage, transfer and protection and disclosure of personal data of Indian residents. The digital economy in India is expected to reach a valuation of 1 trillion US dollars by 2022 and it will attract numerous global players who must comply with the new laws. India has followed the European Union laws in the protection of uh, personal privacy of the people. We also have to promote forms of resistance to the intrusion into our private space. And privacy is fundamental to the human decency. It is interesting to note that the divinely revealed religions preach the importance of individual privacy and ban unannounced intrusion into people's personal life. In future, we will be able to control the surveillance capitalists because surveillance capitalism is young, barely 20 years in making, but democracy is old, rooted in generations of hope and contest. The surveillance capitalists are rich and powerful, but they are not invulnerable. They have one Achilles eel, that is fear. They fear lawmakers, who do not fear them. They fear citizens who demand a new road toward what they insist as new answers to old questions. Who will know? Who will decide? Who knows? Who will decide? Who decides? Who will write the music? All these things are to be done by citizens. And there is that old adage, still relevant and meaningful, Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Thank you all.